For many cruisers, their fairy tale dream has turned into a nightmare. Others are swiftly booking a themed cruise that I'm not sure will ever happen. Ahoy, travelers. It's Amy here with your weekly cruise news roundup and my thoughts on some of the biggest stories of the week. Be sure to stick around for my thoughts on these Taylor Swift cruises. It turns out vision and promise is just not enough to get a cruise off the ground. Life at Sea Cruises has officially canceled its ambitious three-year around-the-world cruise after a series of delays and challenges, like not having a ship. That's a pretty big challenge. This has disappointed guests who spent tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some had sold their homes to book passage on a three-year cruise that was never to be. I guess for some, the chance of spending as low as $40,000 a year to cruise around the world was just too much of a temptation to not put everything on the line. However, many have been skeptical that a launch date would ever happen after all these setbacks. The first real hit came back in May when the original ship purchased for this grand experiment just wasn't going to be seaworthy for a three-year trip around the world, which set back the original launch date of November 1st to the 11th. At that point, I'd already written off this venture. How are they going to find a new ship and refit it? And that did they just need 10 more days to do that? It doesn't seem like the line was being completely upfront about their lack of a ship because meanwhile, some who had booked passage had already arrived in Istanbul for the initial departure date of November 1st. It's like they still thought it was going to happen. Others began pulling out and getting refunds with every setback and new launch date. November the 11th turned into November 30th, as the line had their eyes set on an older Aida ship that was up for sale. Sadly, the optimism of those who stuck with the life at sea was not enough to get this project off the ground. The ship was sold to another cruise line, and life at sea cruises is no more. I am sure there are many disappointed people out there and some who are probably very upset as well due to now being homeless. The question now is whether or not everyone will get full refunds, which is going to be supposedly issued in monthly installments. I don't know how happy I would be about that, nor would I even trust that I would be getting all my money back. When interviewed, one formerly hopeful passenger said, quote, there's a whole lot of people right now with nowhere to go and some need their refund to even plan a place to go. It's not good right now. The more I looked into this, the sketchier the whole thing became. Not only were guests not kept up to date about the lack of a viable ship, obviously they weren't. If that happened in May and people packed up and moved to Istanbul shortly before November, even now there's no guarantee that anyone will get a full refund. The line is telling people that they need to formally request a refund which shouldn't be necessary. If the cruise is canceled, it should be an automatic refund. I mean, it may take 30 business days. I could understand that, but obviously they were using the money that they were getting from these bookings to fund this whole project. So, which I get, but now there's no project, but I'm sure the money has been spent. The likelihood of receiving a refund can vary based on the financial stability of the cruise line, the terms and conditions of the booking, and any applicable travel insurance policies. Now, we know they aren't financially stable, and they've not published their terms and conditions. In fact, as of filming, they still had their booking page up and running. The entire nightmare just seems like a very good example of, if it seems too good to be true, it likely is. Well, Carnival regulars may be surprised and disappointed to learn that one of the line's most popular cruise directors has decided to leave just prior to his transfer to the Mardi Gras, Jonathan Cookie Adams. He made the announcement on social media Friday to much shock from his followers. In a statement, the former CD said that he wasn't fired or forced to resign, but that he has decided to take some time for himself. It will be interesting to see who Carnival gets to replace Cookie on the Mardi Gras with such short notice. I hope those that celebrate had a great Thanksgiving. We enjoyed time with family, and when the extended family went home for the night, the rest of us decided to watch a Christmas movie together. It was between Home Alone and Elf, and Home Alone won the vote. Not my favorite, but everyone else really loves it, and I do enjoy watching the kids laugh. 
Normally, I would use Friday to put up the Christmas decorations, but I only got some tubs dragged out of storage and the small tree put up. I had planned to put up the big tree a week or so ago, but didn't have the time or take the time. I went to get the tree out of storage yesterday and realized I didn't have a six foot white tree like I thought I did. I thought I'd actually bought one last year or the year before and I didn't. And I really wanted to use a white tree this year because it really makes my glass ornaments pop. I thought about running to Walmart to get one before I remembered it was Black Friday. So I ended up ordering one from Amazon and it won't get here till Monday. I guess that's not too late. I don't know how many of you brave the stores for Black Friday deals, but I'm more of a sit in my comfy clothes at the house and surf deals on the internet type of person. Not that I even did that. There were a few years when mom and I would brave the stores for that one big item. But that was back when Black Friday began at 6 a.m., not 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving. We would drive the hour and a half to the big city and then had a strategic plan that allowed us to get in, and get out, and be back home well before noon. I remember one year, it was a computer. We rushed into Best Buy. We were at the front of the line. I think we got there at like, I don't know, 4.30, 5 in the morning. I think it was probably more like 4 in the morning. We were very close to the front of the line. We rushed in. I had a computer I needed to get, got the computer. Mom went and got a couple other things. We were out the door and back home by 9 a.m. There isn't a deal out there that would convince me to do that today. Well, maybe if I could get the camera I have my eye on for half price, maybe I would, be con I would reconsider. I previously touched on my thoughts about Black Friday cruise deals and I made a short about it as well, but let's get into a, a little deeper because these deals are still going on for the next week or so depending on the line. Seems like Black Friday and Cyber Monday has morphed together and created a monster where deals can begin any time in November and last until Christmas. It's important to know that cruise lines offer sales year round. The sales may change, but they're all basically the same. One week you may see 30% off a cruise fare, then the next week it's 60% off the second guest. Well, that's the same deal, it's just been repackaged. You also have to keep track to see if prices go up prior to major sales like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. That's not to say there aren't some legitimate deals out there though. For example, if you go to Celebrity Site, they're saying they have 70% off the second guest. They have that sale or one like it all the time. However, they do have a real Black Friday deal, but it isn't something that you would likely know about unless you have a cruise already booked with Celebrity and you go online and look at what offerings you have for your cruise. So I'm telling you this right now, if you have a cruise booked with any line, go to that line, log in, check and see what deals are available for your cruise. We have a Celebrity Cruise coming up in 2025, so I was able to go in and see these deals and take advantage of them. What are the deals? 50% off select cruise add-ons. These are things like drink packages, excursions, spa services, etc. These things have fixed prices that don't fluctuate week to week unless the line just raises that price. That's where you know you're getting a good deal. I took advantage of this and I got 50% off premium Wi-Fi. It was something I was going to purchase at some point and now I have it locked in at 50% of the current price. Because if 2024 is anything like 23 was, there's a good chance the prices will go up at some point before our cruise, maybe more than once. Carnival has been having sales on their home and clothing store for those that want Carnival brand sheets. I don't know why you would. Or an ugly Christmas sweater of John Heald. Of course, they also have a sale on their cruises as well, but it's hard to tell how much of a deal that really is compared to if you had purchased a cruise with whatever deal they had going on back in September when the cruises might have been cheaper to begin with. I keep going on Carnival and logging in because we do have that cruise coming up in January and I'm hoping to get the Wi-Fi cheaper, but not, no luck so far. While I don't want to turn anyone away from taking advantage of any sale you think is a real bargain, especially because this is something John Heald said on his Facebook page just this week is that he's been told by the higher ups at Carnival that they are almost sold out for 2024. So if you're looking to book something for 24, you probably need to get on it, no matter what line that is. However, I do want to make sure that everyone really does their research before getting caught up in sales adverts. It's also important to know that the wave season is usually when cruise lines have some serious deals 
And that's going to be after the first of the year. That occurs usually mid to late January. Well, before we get to our final news story, if you enjoy this video and maybe even learn something, consider subscribing with the notification bell on so you don't miss on, on any future posts. Be sure to hit that like button as well. It only takes a second and doing so helps cruisers like you find us. One industrious travel company is attempting to benefit off Swifties and the insane popularity of Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Yep, there are now two Taylor Swift themed cruises out there available to book. Sailing out of LA on the Navigator of the Seas next year, the company promoting this are curating activities that Swifties should enjoy. They're calling these cruises Bestie Cruises. You have to book through this specific travel agency to get any of the special events. And of course, it's more expensive to book through them than directly through Royal Caribbean. Now, I'm about the furthest thing from a Swifty, and if you were to ask me if Taylor Swift is overrated or underrated, Travis Kelsey probably wouldn't be happy with my answer. Music ability aside, I find the insane popularity surrounding her a little bit annoying, and I don't like that she pops up all over my social media. I don't get the hype. You're more likely to find me jamming out to ABBA or Queen than anything from the last 10 or 20 years, though, so what do I know? This means I don't really understand the different special events that they've got planned for this cruise, but what I do know is that Taylor is a very good businesswoman, and that is why she is worth $1 billion. She hit a billion dollars, I think, this last year. I mean, the woman has convinced thousands of people who already spent hundreds of dollars each to go see her in person on the Eras Tour to then go watch a movie about that very tour in theaters. She protects her brand too. This is well known. Many will probably remember her fight with Spotify over her music. This that was a big deal when that happened. I just don't know how she's gonna feel about entire cruises being sold using her name. Her lawyers are not new to shutting down any trademark infringement. Small business owners selling through Etsy found themselves on the losing end of that battle just for having her lyrics on items. For artists, there is a fine line between fan appreciation and brand infringement. I'm going to be interested in seeing where this ends up. Where do you land? Will the cruises happen or will Tay Tay shut them down? Let me know. Was it too hard on Taylor? She has some good songs, but the absolute worship and adoration from some of her fans just seems way over the top to me. I feel the same thing about Queen B, except I don't like Beyonce songs, but... Who am I to judge? Are you ready for more cruise tips? Why not stick around and check out this video where I list 20 great stocking stuffers for the cruiser in your life and then come back for more information designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.